there, everybody. Welcome to June 15th. Of course, if you're watching this after June 15th, the information's still going to be good. Just know that we missed you on June 15th. But this is June 15th. This is the Ask Steve Show. My name is Dave, and this is Steve Edwards. Every single Wednesday, we get together to talk mules and donkeys. And we're very excited to do that again with you today. So we have pre-recorded this. We've been going back and forth this summer doing some pre-recorded episodes and doing some live episodes. And why would we do that? Well, because we want to be here each and every week with you when we can. And between my travel schedule and Steve's travel schedule, of course, he's living the... well. You're not retired, Steve. I think you're working just as hard as you ever have to keep people in the saddle and enjoying these animals. But he's enjoying the I'm a retired cowboy life, and I'm enjoying the I got kids, I got family, and summertime is travel time. Uh, so that's why we're not live today. But hey, you know what? The information is going to be great today and into the future. Steve, how have things been since I last talked to you? Well, we've been busy. That's sure enough for sure there. Uh, been getting some things fixed around here that's needed fixed. and. We try to do that in the morning because, uh, like right now, it's about, have to look and see, I think it's about 106, 107 out there. But, uh, yeah, we've been busy. How about you? Now, you're getting ready to go do a pastor's conference, is it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going back down to, I'm going back down to Houston. Uh, one of the one of the groups that I do a lot of work with, they provide resources for pastors. Of course, there's lots of pastors and and uh, so many of you uh, watching just do an amazing job supporting your pastors, serving in the church. Uh, of course, if uh, if some of you folks uh, don't don't know Jesus or haven't met Jesus, um, the reason why folks do that is because when you meet Jesus and you realize just how good He's been to you, all you can help to do is be good back. Of course, uh, of course, there's lots of questions around that. And you can always ask Steve or I, and we'll always be happy and to answer. And just like there's no off-limit questions uh, here for mules and donkeys, there's no off-limit questions about uh, Jesus and our faith in him. So always feel free to ask those. Today, we're going to help you get a little bit more faith in your training. Of course, everyone thinks that maybe it's the donkey or the mule that needs a little bit of training. And there's probably a few things we can do. But you know what? When it comes to being the herd leader, you're the one in charge. They're looking to you for leadership. They're looking to you right. for what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. And so that's what we're going to do today. I want to give a shout out to all of our friends who are watching all over the U.S. We've got Eileen who watches almost weekly. We've got David O'Brien. We've got um, we've got all of our friends up in Utah. More and more friends joining from Utah. We've got uh, Jackie watching from New Mexico. We've got Maya watching from California. Uh, we've got uh, the Ron and Virginia watching, I think, from Milan, Texas. We've got um, Yolanda who tunes in from the Netherlands and Yolanda takes us international. We've got all of our friends down under in Australia who have taken us international. More and more friends are watching up from above the U.S. border in uh, Canada, watching from British Columbia, uh, watching from Toronto area. So I just want to say hello and welcome to each and every one of you. And if you are one of our uh, old timers who have been watching with us, you know what I'm going to say. There's three things that we ask. The first is that you say you're watching. Let us know where you're watching, uh, your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like. We love to see uh, all of the names, the faces that y'all got your pictures loaded up there to Facebook and YouTube, and it sure is fun seeing you and getting to know you. Um, so put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like. We sure would love to see you. Second thing, even though we are uh, pre-recorded this week, I go back and I look on Facebook and YouTube for as many mule and donkey questions as I can find. So be sure to ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got, because I'm going to go back, and then the next program, we're going to use your questions for the content. So we'll get those answered for you so you can get out there, gain trust, get results with your animal. The third thing, and this is really the most important, this show is absolutely free. We don't charge anything for it. We don't there's no admission. There's no registration. We do it because uh, the results that folks get are real, and they make a real impact. But you can help us and do us a little bit of a, a fee, a, a payback by sharing 
this on YouTube and sharing this on Facebook. How do you do this? Well, on YouTube, you click the share button and then you can send a text message or an email or you can post it to social media. YouTube loves seeing that and that helps get this in front of more folks. And then on Facebook, you can click the share button and uh, and then or you can tag a friend or family. So we're going to get right into it. And Steve, I'm going to ask a question um, that I've been wanting to ask for a little while. You've answered this in the past, but we haven't talked about it in recent uh, shows. And the question that I want to ask you is, my mule just came home. I've got my mule. I've got him out in the stall. What do I need to think about as I just get started with this animal? Man, oh man, there's a good man. I like the part. You took him home and you put it in the stall. Good. You don't take them home and turn them loose to pasture for other equine. Uh, that always ends up being a wreck. But to take them and put them in a stall, all right, here's what we do. We start building a relationship. I'm the herd leader. You are my herd. We put the come along hitch on, and we do some work in the pen there just a little bit of maybe stopping and being quiet, looking straight ahead, nothing big. Just kind of quiet, looking straight ahead. And then walk them out, walk them around the, your, your farm, your ranch, whatever you got. And just start building a relationship. Go over there. Do not tie them to a hitch and post with a come along rope. Leave the halter alone and start learning to build, hear this, to build good communication between the lead rope off of the come along and your mule because it's not important to start doing the brushing or the picking up the feet. It's important that the mule always has his left eye looked at you while you're brushing, picking up the feet, things like this. Come on the right side, his right eye is looking at you. That's the right brain and the left brain, folks. They don't have one brain, they have two brains, one for each side. So that's what I would do. I would start taking my come along rope and I'd start building a foundation. Oh, but Steve, I've seen him ridden. Yeah. Somebody else you've seen riding. Some, in a different place. That is a whole different world for these mules. I get a kick out of folks. I was, I was reading one this morning, Facebook, and I don't do much Facebook, folks, because I don't do much when it comes down to typing. I'm just no good at it. But here's this mule. Supposed to have been there, done that fast walker and everything. It has a pretty good backup. Got it, but I didn't hear nothing about picking up the feet or easy to catch or side passing or turn on the forehand, all that stuff. And folks, always have somebody demonstrate all this stuff before you buy it. And then you always do a vet check. And then, anyway, here we are, we're back at the corral. That's what I would do. I'd build a ground foundation and I would start building my timing. You know, writing, that's up to you. But I would sure feel, feel a lot safer if you spent time on the ground. But Steve, my mule's already trained. My mule is already trained. I, it it it's been to the it's been uh, packing, um, ponied right behind, had no problems whatsoever. I've taken this uh, the owner, the previous owner. I saw uh, I saw a little girl get up and just ride it back and forth, and and she, he this mule did so good with that little girl on it. So I've got a trained mule. Uh, what 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 do you say for me? Um, any little girl can sit on a mule and just kind of ride around. I've seen it time and time again. Uh, what really bothers me is they don't have helmets on, but that's another story. But, you know, folks, listen, just because somebody else is riding it, some kid's riding it, some 90-year-old person's riding it, it makes no difference. This is you riding it. When you watch this mule, and it is supposed to be trained, not been to Colorado on so many elk pack trips, not been across all these rivers, not been on all these trail rides, all that stuff is okay. But does the mule in a 10 foot circle, turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters and side pass freely upon a loose rein? That's really important. Does the mule uh, stand still and quiet uh, when you're brushing it and picking up all four feet? Give it to you readily. See, that's all trained. Uh, this, this thing of what folks say is broke or trained, I've, I've seen very few trained mules over the years, all right? Uh, will they become untrained? Yes, because of the rider. Now, my wife's mule, 28 years old, you know, for 26 years, uh, I've trained on her. 
I kept her finely tuned. Everybody you can imagine rode that mule. Okay, not only was she a trained mule, but she had been there, done that as well, but I still had to keep her tuned. As soon as somebody new would put their hand on that mule, that mule would change. Well, there you go, folks. Trained mules, not what you think, not what you think. There's foundation, right, Steve? There is foundation. foundation, and the only way you can tell if this animal has got the foundation that you want is to get out there and start doing your own ground foundation training, and you'll discover pretty quickly what type of a foundation this animal has. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and play a video for us right now. This video is one of Steve showing us how you can check for a foundation. Steve, it is, what is it? Turn on the, tell me what it is real quick. Turn on the foreham. That means the front end stays in place and the back end goes around. Side pass, that means the whole mule moves sideways. And turn on the hindquarters, where the back end stays in place and the front end comes around. That is trained. Now all of that is well trained, is on a light rein on a finished bit. In foundational training, it's two hands on a snaffle bit. Very good, folks. Go ahead, take a watch. Okay, you see how well she's standing there? Yeah. Okay, don't pick up on the lead rope. That hurts me. It bothers me, you see? When they get to where they have so much respect for that rope, even though that mule is walking off, he would rather follow that mule, but he knows if that rope moves, his nose is going to be uncomfortable. And as long as he stands right there, she's fine. All right, now, folks tell you that their mule, this mule you're going to buy and spend $10,000 for, whatever the case may be, they'll say to you that he's well-trained. Okay? If you hear the word well-trained, what's, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, you can do it in a 10-foot circle. But you can do it in a 10 foot circle. That sounds like a Steve school. Edwards because student right there. That's what he's taught us. Yeah, okay. But what comes to your mind? If you, if you come up to, to look to ride a mule, what are you going to ask? Him? If you can pay attention to you, okay. What they use them for. What they use them for, okay. Does he get on him safely? Oh, you better stay off of him there. There's no such thing as being getting on him safely. There's no such thing as a safe meal. They don't exist. In fact, I wish I had my helmets here. My helmets are actually a Prescott. I used to wear a helmet a lot. No such thing as a safe meal. Why are you getting on him? Because the guy person in your spine will probably get on That's right. Don't you do it. That's right. Now, I want to see him move, loosen around him, too. That's right. That's what I do with her. That's right. So you want to see groundwork. You want to see him pick up all four feet. You want to see him catch him. You want to see him brush it. If tied to a hitching post is okay, or this right here, if you really want to impress me, do this, okay? Now, the next thing, <coughs> if the mule has a good foundation in a 10-foot circle, they're going to turn on the forehand, turn on the hindquarters, and side pass. She didn't know that. Okay. But they didn't advertise it. She did. Yeah. She okay. never even had her arena work. Okay, there you are, okay? So you can see what she's done here just in a matter of a few hours. Plus what she's done well, in the past. Daughter, since, since, since she got her past clinic, year. Since the last time. clinic, yeah. Okay, so now, so somebody says he's trained. I said, okay, show me him side passing. What's that? Well, well then, okay, show me turn on forehand. What's that? He's not trained. If he don't side pass, he doesn't turn on forehand. He doesn't side pass, doesn't turn on forehand, get that? Doesn't turn on the hindquarters, he's not trained. Oh, but I cross rivers, so what? I go by traffic. So what? Does it have a whoa? Does it have a backup? That's trained. But going up and down the road, or you see some 10-year-old girl riding around in a circle, that's not trained, folks. That's what you see all the time. Or like this one show that I just heard about, I didn't know anything about it, where they, they, they call it mules and donks or something like that. Is that what it is? And I, I just saw some pictures the other day. This guy emailed me. And he says, Steve, can, can you fix a mule from Bucky? And I said, there's a good possibility, yes. He said, I said, uh, he said, well, well, I said, well, you know about the history. He says, well, he said, let me send you a couple pictures. 
Here's this mule coming off a straight off heel, no britching on him. The guy's heels are almost touching his rump, like this, going down this really steep hill, and the saddle's sitting directly on top of the scapula. And he is almost sitting on top of the shoulder. But he's going down the hill, and he looks really masculine doing it, but he's screwing up the mule. You know, what do you get for a 10 cent ribbon? That's not worth it, you know, it's not worth it. So let's go back. What's it look like? I take my mule and I adjust the halter. <coughs> okay, show me, turn on the hind quarters. So the back end stays in place, front end goes over. So I want the guy to show me. Here the mule goes and back end stays in place, front end move over. Turn on the hind quarters, okay? Turn on the forehand, front end stays in place, back end moves around. If he's trained, we're gonna see this. If he's not trained, all you're doing is setting this mule. You're buying a $5,000 mule that doesn't side pass the trail, that's not trained. You guys got the picture, all right? So now, we turn on the front end, the front end stays in place, back end moves around. I'll take it. Side pass. Okay, we can say that this mule has a foundation. He's got a good foundation. Is he trained? No. He has a foundation. Think more foundation than his training. Where does the training come in? For riding every day. I put a foundation on him for him to do these stuff. Now she's going to do things a little bit different. He's going to do things a little bit different, but I still have my foundation. Now, if the mule one day, he says, my mule won't do ABC. I say, do this and this, corrects the mule and away he goes. Got the picture? So if my mule has a foundation not trained, because everybody uses that word loosely, he's got a foundation, he's going to turn on the, side, turn on the forehead, turn on the hindquarters, and side pass, okay? And most important thing, backing up. Because if you got a good backup, you got a good stop. So the next question that I've got, this one comes from Laura. Laura shared this question over on YouTube. So glad that you're watching and hanging out with us, Laura. Thank you so much. It means a lot. She says, hi, Steve and Dave. Laura from Missouri here. My question is on shoes. What's the normal time between shoeing a mule? And also, when should I use drill tech or borium on there? So, Steve, what's the normal time between shoeing a mule and then drill tech or borium? When should we use it? I don't know what either of those are. So, can you answer okay. that for us? Okay, so let's first look at drill tech and borium. You usually use drill, drill tech and borium. It is actually welded onto the toe and onto the heel. Those three points, simply because that is the way an equine steps. You see a whole foot, in all actuality, the way their bone structure actually hits the ground, the toe and both heels. Now, you put that borium on there because you're in slick ice, real icy country, or you've got uh, a lot of mud, uh, like we used to use them at the canyon a lot. I can tell you, I rarely use borium uh, my my shoes uh, and drill tech, my shoes usually did really well. They last an average of about eight weeks. And then I will pull them off, clean them up, shape them a little bit, and then put them back on. And then I usually can get another eight weeks. I usually always use the same shoe at least 16 weeks. Very good. Thank you so much for that question, Laura. Appreciate it. Just want to give a shout out to our friends over on uh, YouTube. We got Mike who has been watching. Thank you, Mike. Richard has been watching. Uh, let's see. Marsha has been watching from Virginia. Good to have you here, Marsha. Lisa, Miss Lisa Hauserman. Now, Steve, I got to tell you this. Lisa, I don't think has been able to join us for a live session but Lisa is watching almost every video that we've got on YouTube. And the reason I know is because she leaves a comment 
on every video that she watches. Lisa in Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania, where we've had high humidity and some pretty strong storms coming through. I'm watching the replay, but we'll have to do it in segments. Thank you. So we love you. We love you watching, Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, the Stefan Farm is watching from Loveland, Colorado, while doing barn chores. And we've heard a lot of folks are doing that. They get their chores done, but they're listening to the wisdom of Steve Edwards and the banter of Dave Shrine coming through their headphones. And so I want to tell you, folks, we actually have something very special for you chore people. We have been putting all of our past episodes up on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can subscribe to the Mule Ranch Podcast, and you don't have to worry about the YouTube video, things like that. You just download them straight to your phone. You can listen to them when you have internet access. If you don't have internet access, and uh, you don't have to worry about keeping the app o open, and it uses less of your data. So go to whatever, wherever you listen to podcasts, go check it out and, uh, and download, and I think you'll enjoy it. I got a comment here from Candy. Candy says, I have benefited more than I realized from your programs and video. Went to look at a mule. When the lady got him out of her stall, he right, walked right over to her. Subconsciously, I knew what to uh, from immersion in all your talks. I guess what to look for. Took his lead, snapped, took his lead, snapped his nose, and he said, okay, I won't do that. Straightened up chewed a bit and watched me. No more problems. Didn't realize I could do that till I did it and it worked. Horses I've had all my life, 77 years. Mules are a new experience, but I like them and I did buy the mules. So that's awesome, Candy. We want to celebrate with you. Very cool for you that's to be able cool. to take what you've been learning and apply it. Now, now, Steve, 77 years, is that too old to get started with a mule? Oh, I don't know. You, you, you're old when you wake up one morning and, and uh, I don't know, and, and something, but anyway, it makes no difference. Hey, my Uncle Bud rode till he was 97 years old, you know. No, no. Hey, I got some other clients that are, where were they from? Georgia, I think. She was 67 and he was 78, and they were buying two colts and starting them colts. Now, they've started other horse colts, but they go, whoa, look what we got here. And they found them to be different. And then they started going on my site. So they bought Richens, Best Cause and all that stuff. But no, nah, man, if you want to stay young, be active. If you want to be a short, a short thing, go to the couch and start watching John Wayne movies. Don't do that. You can stay busy. Get out there and be your own John Wayne. That's right. what we're talking about here. Right, right, right. Uh, Herman right. sent in a question. Herman says, I got a donkey a couple of weeks ago. I put your come along setup on to get it out of the sale barn and I've got it fairly halter broke. I have found that a cow stable halter, nylon noseband, ch chain chin piece works very well to lead with. My question is, where on the nose and or chin should the noseband or chin chain scent Sit. Thank you, Herman. That halter and that chain should set on a nail on your wall. Not to ever be used again. Folks, those chains underneath the chin here are killing some vital nerves you need to make a nice mule. I tell people, take those things and I prefer you to throw them away, but hang it on a nail and say, I'm never going to go back to that barbaric training again. Okay? You don't need it, folks. Look, the cumberland hitch communicates to the nose, underneath the chin, and behind the pole. Not just underneath the chin. It communicates to all parts so that you can refine your communication. All that chain is going to do is going to kill the nerves underneath the ear, and get to where that mule will, will hate you. Forget that stuff. That, that, is, that, that training should, should never be in existence ever again, folks. Next question. This one comes from uh, Julie. Julie uh, asks, um, Vet told me I could ride my two-year-old mule for about 15 minutes at a time. Does that sound good? No. Okay. Did that vet tell you the knees were closed? Look, there's cartridges between those knees. And when they're down and they're busted up and they're not working anymore, you got no mule. 
A two-year-old don't have any need to be ridden. Folks, make sure the knees are closed. Do your ground foundation first. Do your groundwork, not just halter training. No, no, no. There's more to it than that. You should be on a six-month program, minimum, four to six hours a week, and you should be doing, yep, groundwork on your two-year-old. Can you put a saddle on? Yeah. Okay. Do I lead him much up the trail? Very little. I don't want the pounding. Now I got my weight on it. That makes things worse, way worse. Okay. But no, don't do that to your two-year-old. So the next question that I've got, this one comes from Gene. Gene sent this in over on Facebook. We were we put a post up there. We said on a mule or donkey, using just one cinch is just asking to have the saddle roll. Folks, you need two cinches. Loose in the front and snug and secure in the back. But Gene wants to know, Steve, how loose do we want this to be in the front? And I'm going to say... How snug do we want it to be on the rear cinch? Okay, well, here's the thing, folks. It's going to be way different with my saddle and my tack compared to somebody else's mule uh, and somebody else's tack and cinches. There's a night and day difference, all right? Now, it also is going to depend on you, the rider, how tight, how snug. My cinches change throughout the day. If I'm going to be roping a bunch of calves and dragging them to the fire, I'm going to tighten up that back cinch, and I mean tighten it up to where I've got belly on both sides of that cinch. I'm going to tighten it right up. That rear cinch must be tightened first. The front cinch can just be snug. Now, if I'm roping something heavy, then I'm going to make it a little bit tighter. But you've got to remember, when you tighten that front cinch, you are restricting all of those muscles and tendons right in behind the scapula. Where do you see white hairs, folks? Look on your horses. Where do you see white hairs? White hairs in behind the scapula. I heard, I talked to a lady the other day. She said, that's because of the ill-fitting saddle. I said, no, it's because you're not using the saddle properly. Both cinches on a mule, you know, the back one should be the tightest, front one loosest. On a horse, front one the tightest, back one snug but you never have a rear cinch on a horse hanging way down. Always snug and always a wide one, not just some little old inch and a half, two inch uh, leather with billets, okay? That does not, okay, balance that saddle correctly. Does not do it. It's imperative you use that rear cinch. Now, my saddles, I have four laticles all the way around so that I can balance the saddle. So there you go. Next question I got. This one comes from um, this one comes from Joan. It's actually more of a of a comment back and forth between Joan and Donna over on Facebook. Um, of course, uh, Steve, we talk a lot about feed because feed and nutrition are absolutely central to not just the health of your animal but the behavior of your animal. And so we've got a great video at muleranch.com slash feed talk. Y'all can go there, get Steve's uh, train, or get Steve's feed video where he talks all about creating a feed and nutrition program for your animals. But one of the things that we talk a little bit about is uh, what to feed and should we feed alfalfa? Joan said, I don't know about anyone else's mule, but if ours gets alfalfa, he goes crazy. I mean, it is a different mule altogether. Well, Donna wrote back. She said, really? And Becky chimed in and said, totally agree. My forward, John, is nuts on alfalfa. And so what I wanted to ask is just kind of along the lines of what Becky was asking. Really? Is that the case? Is it really the alfalfa that changes their behavior? Yes. You know, it's that alfalfa creates several things. The behavior is probably the, the worst one of them, all, of them all. They don't need it. They don't need a constant diet of alfalfa. They don't need it. You know, I've seen a lot of people say, well, I've been, I've gotten by. Well, you are one lucky person, one a thousand. I've got a very good friend that he's had more colic problems than Carter has feeding at peanuts, and he always still feeds alfalfa hay, and he won't feed anything else. Now, guaranteed, he's a rancher, yeah, and guaranteed he uses them, but they stand, folks, uh, at least eight months out of the year um, before they get heavily worked. And when he's heavily working, it goes from there. Now, the other thing with the alfalfa, and here's the problem with the alfalfa, is the carbohydrates. And the same thing when it comes down to all of your hay. 
Okay, folks, it's the time of the year when that hay is cut as to when it's best or not so good for your mule and donkey and horses. But no, you don't need alfalfa. Just feed a, a good hay. But always remember this, folks. Test your hay. Have it tested. What kind of vitamins and minerals is it shorted on? Your meal needs proper vitamins and minerals. Your meal needs clean water. And it needs salt, good salt block. Not a mineral block. You're wasting your money there, okay? But yes, yeah, yeah, stay away from the alfalfa. And here's the last thing. If you want to cripple your meal, keep feeding alfalfa. What do you mean, Steve? Cripple my meal? Yeah, cripple your meal. Here's the problem. They can very, very easily get grass founder. But Steve, alfalfa is not a grass. Well, it's a type of grass. But still, they can get foundered. You see mules with big, heavy, crested necks, fat pockets along the, uh, the, the ribs and across the tail, and your donkeys as well. Your donkeys are the worst one. That is where your donkeys get it. I mean, your mules get it. It's from Daddy the donkey. The big crest, the, all those fat pockets, they get really bad, and they, they, get, they become crippled. Grass founder is not a pretty thing. So the big thing is, Get yourself a hair follicle sample or a blood test. Take it, get your vet and get that done. Test that, see what your mule is vitamin and, and, and deficient on. Test your donkey to see what they need as well. And then, then have your hay tested so you know what vitamins and minerals to feed. Just don't buy any kind of old supplement out there. Don't do it, folks. It's like you and I, we have different vitamins and minerals that I need different ones that Dave needs, you know. So that's that's very important, folks, to consider. Next question I got, this one comes from Catherine over on YouTube. It's a little bit longer, but it's a good one. Hi, Steve and Dave. I'm Catherine from Italy, watching you the morning after. Gone international. Thank you, Catherine. Interesting comments about mules and donkeys that are difficult about having their feet handled. I have the same problem with nearly all my donkeys. I'm not contradicting Steve in any way, but have found an instant solution by using traditional twitch. By this, I mean a wooden one with a rope loop. My 12-year-old mare rears up and kicks like lightning, but the twitch applied to her upper lip, she shuts her eyes and <laughs> goes off to sleep. Farrier came the other day to trim her very long feet, and within 10 minutes, he had done them all. Think the come along rope would work just as well, but needs time. Uh, many sessions for feet handling problems, whereas the twitch could help instantly depending on your animal. My donkey has been left running wild all her life, so is not even very well halter broke. I've had her for five years and can't do much with her. Maybe the 28 year old might be able to accept the twitch. What do you think, Steve? Is the come along rope better for restraining unruly donks and mules? It's, it's better for restraining in the long run, folks. Look. With, if we get focused just on one one particular thing, you know, we want to shoe him, for instance. I've got a video that I'm going to share with Dave, and Dave maybe we'll see it the next week, of one of my clients with a weed, with a leaf blower, blowing his mule off. And you look at him, and yes, he's tied to a hitching post. But no, he's not tied tight. It's hanging loose. The mule's head is down because proper foundational training was done to start with. You see, you're looking at getting shot, but you're also looking at you need to do other things with him, like doctoring and stuff, or get him trimmed. So I would, I would look at it as take your come-along rope, use that come-along rope, and teach the mules, teach the donkeys feet to stand still. And this horse, the same way. Yeah, she goes to quiet, okay? And she drops her head, and that's nice. I've, that happens you know, on a few different horses and mules and donkeys. But the, the, the twitch that I use creates natural endorphins. Folks, you want your mule or your donkey to be just as soft when you begin as when you end. And that's what I try to do. I try to build confidence where they will trust me. Use the come along rope. Build a foundation with the come along rope. Then, when it comes down to things like vet work, when it comes down to uh, uh, trimming and this sort of thing, all of that will fall into place because you did proper groundwork. 
Next question comes in from Mohammed over on YouTube. Mohammed's watching from Saudi Arabia, taking us international there, Mohammed. Wow. So glad to have you. The weather is sunny and the temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. Thank you for all your knowledge and systematic training. My question, is it necessary to castrate mule, uh, male mules? Absolutely. Get it done right away. You, that's brain surgery. There's nothing meaner and nastier than a mule that is intact. I've, I have seen them things be just vicious. You, they can't breed, they're missing a chromosome. So you cannot breed to another mule or a horse and have babies because they're missing the chromosome. Yes, they have testicles and yes, they're in place, but it is imperative you get them castrated, yes. Next question comes in from Deborah. I have a very skittish mare mule, seven years old. She won't let me anywhere near her. I have her separately stalled so she knows I bring her food, water, and hay. Second week and zero progress. She was completely unhandled as far as I can tell. Had her six months. She takes treats from my hand, but that's it, so I quit that. What would you say to encourage Deborah, Steve? Okay, Deborah, it's time to set it up so that you can get into a round pen. Folks, I want you to think about this. She's been six months, right, Dave? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, folks, three, six, nine, twelve. When you are building a foundation, those three, first three, make up the foundation for the rest of the mule's training, all the way to twelve. If you do something once and he does it good, he does it a second time and does it better, do it a third time. Now you've got a foundation. But don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. That's why that mule is as old as it is and still don't want to respond, simply because he's never had a foundation put into place. Don't just do 20 minutes or five minutes here, 10 minutes there, or every fifth day. Don't do that. Three, six, nine, twelve. Now, if you can't get it done by the second time you do it, we're not going to go on. Stop right there. You don't want to keep teaching them bad habits, and that's exactly what is happening here. We're teaching them bad habits. So let's go on. Get it set up to where you've got your corral, your working corral, is next to a round pin. 40 foot would be the minimum, okay? Uh, 50 foot would be a pretty nice one to have. So let's go back. You run the mule into that round pin, and you start doing round pin work, okay? Any kind of round pin work, okay? The, it's not important to have it, have them run all the time. Don't do that, okay? Here's the deal. You want to be the most important one in that brown pen. The most important one. So as you approach that meal, she takes off. Now, folks, get this in your mind. It's your timing. Fix it before they do it. So in other words, this is it. If they got a right ear pointing towards you, they're saying, come on, visiting hours are on. If they got their head elevated and they're looking the other way, there's no visiting hours. You don't step no farther back to, to them, okay? Now, it's hard to explain all the details, but you need to put them in a the round pen, and there you need to work. That's, and not run, 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 all right? You need to learn how to step to the nose, to whoa, shoulder neutral zone, and over on the, the tail um, for go forward. Uh, I've got a, a video in my how to communicate video that I'm helping a lady out with, and that'll help you out a lot. Uh, and there's also the ones with the lady where we're in the corrals and uh, the lady and a man and we're, we're approaching and how to approach. Uh, that's that one Dave um, that we did a video of the husband and wife. Mm, yes. Um, yeah, it's on YouTube. It's uh, yeah. Establishing Leadership. That's it. There it's the Establishing go. Leadership. There and you if you all look on YouTube for Queen Valley Establishing Leadership, yep. there's an entire video series there that Steve's talking about. Free. So much more than I could put right here. Yeah, it's free. That's Steve's favorite F word, free. Yep, F-bomb. That's my F-bomb. F-bomb. That's right. Yeah, y'all check that out. Uh, Marsha's got a question here. Uh, just turn my two mules... Um, out to pasture and they are so happy. My corral is so muddy here in Virginia. The rain has been unreal and flooding the rivers and creeks. I bought a summer supply of spot on spot on tick control for them because the ticks are pretty bad here. Do you ever use them? 
Um, I realize you are in dry country. Also, I wanted to try Ivermectin Dewormer as a one-time tick killer in two counties. All my feed stores were sold out. Apparently, non-horse people are buying it all up and using it on themselves to cure COVID-19. Um, any comments here from Marsha, Steve? You know, I, I understand about, yeah, it's muddy and this sort of thing. You know, folks, try to, uh, try to put them, try to set up your corrals to where they're going to be dry. I realize that a lot of y'all, like in Virginia, you get a lot of rain, and I understand that. Uh, at my ranch, we have, especially coming here this summer, we've got the monsoons, and we get down pours. I built my corrals up so that they're not down. They're built up so the water will run off. I put granite in the bottom so that it stayed hard. So in other words, I prepared a nice home for them that if we have adverse weather, they can still stay in their corrals and be happy. The problem will turn them out in the field, folks. Yes, it's good for now, and I understand what you're saying, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to create problems beyondwards when it comes down to turning them out to an arena. They, I mean, a corral, uh, a big a probably pastor with their buddy. They don't need you now, okay? And yes, you may have gained a little bit. They were happy, but you're going to be really unhappy with the catching and things like this. Folks, take your corrals. I got a, t a 20 by 20 stall. Half of it is under roof. Okay? 10 foot of it is under roof. It is on, standing on granite and it's up high so water rolls off. So prepare your stalls that way. Okay? And you'll have a lot happier meal and you'll be a lot happier. That's great. Um, let's see here. A couple more questions and then uh, that'll be it for today. Joanne is over on Facebook. Had a question. Beautiful color on the mules I see on your Facebook page. I had two mules. I have never owned a donkey. Are they about the same as a mule? Uh, same as to what? You know, uh, Just same ownership? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about a donkey is if you can't get along with a donkey, you can't get along with anything. Uh, I sent you some pictures, Dave, of, uh, of Jesus riding a donkey. Yeah, I'll put those up right now. Go yeah. ahead, tell yeah. us what we're and, looking and at here's here. Here's the deal, folks. Here's this donkey that was untouched, untouched, eight weeks before this pageant. Untouched. The come-along hitch made the difference. I'm telling you, folks, you, you, you're going to think I'm, I'm a little funny on this, but I can train a donkey to ride, drive, and pack, and half the time I can train a mule. I really can because I got all the brains. <laughs> That's the thing with a donkey, folks. They, they're incredibly smart. And, and, and yes, they can outsmart you just like any other equine because you're a predator, okay? But donkeys are great. And you see in this videos here of all these crowds, hundreds of people, and this church is putting on this big pageant, and they do it every year. Uh, the LDS are uh, putting on every year. And this is one of my clients. He called me and said, Steve, I don't have any donkeys. I got to find one. And I said, good luck on that one because not only are they expensive, but they're hard to find good ones, you know, like anything else. Well, he, he found finds one unbroke, and here it is in a pageant eight weeks later. It's awesome. Thanks so much, folks, for hanging out with us today. Uh, it's awesome to be able to get together with you each and every week. It's a blessing and it's a privilege. We do not take it for granted. Uh, so many of y'all have been able to reach out to Steve directly and he's been able to help you get your uh, questions answered. If you've got any questions that you would like for us to get to in our next program, like I said at the very beginning, I'd love to have you share those questions here in the comment section. I'm going to be going back uh, the rest of the week, gathering up those questions so that we're good to go for our next episode. So be sure to ask them. There's no dumb questions. There's no questions that we've a already answered that we're not going to answer again. Um, we get new folks all the time watching first time ever. And so if that is you today, if this is your first time ever joining us, I really do appreciate it. And we would invite you back 
next week. And if you haven't checked out all of the free videos available on our YouTube channel, well, you can go to YouTube, just search Queen Valley Mule Ranch. You'll see the guy with the mule. I think it's a mule. Maybe it's a donkey. I can't remember the profile pic. You'll see a guy with a, a great looking equine. That's what you'll find. Just click on that. It's Queen Valley Mule Ranch with Steve Edwards. You can find all sorts of great, great videos in addition to all of our past videos uh, for this program. And then uh, we'd love to hear from you. Steve, anything else you want to say before we're all done here? No, Dave, uh, I, I really appreciate everybody calling me in and asking questions. Folks, I want to talk to you. I, I, I wish I could be like Dave and just type. I can't do that. When my fingers are moving like this, I'm eating. Yes, if I corner something, you know. But Dave, his fingers are running 9-0, you know, all the time. You know, I can't do that. When it comes down to typing, uh-uh. And that's good for you because when you have a question and you email me or text me, I am personally going to call you. When you make an order for anything, even a come on rope, I'm personally going to call you. I personally want to know, you know. And that's that's uh, that, that's the end result. Look at Dave. Look how happy he is. His hair stands straight up every time he sees me. I'm a big bag of joy over here, Steve. I'm loving life and loving living. It's good stuff. <laughs> good for you, my brother. Well, hey, go over there to that pastor's uh, uh, program in in, uh, in Texas and enjoy and be blessed. I will. I will. Thank you, everybody. God bless to you all. If you ever have any questions about what it is to know and follow Jesus, we're here to answer those questions for you. But, you know, we, we want to help you any way we can. And mules and donkeys, we'll, we'll answer those questions as well. Looking forward to hearing from you. Don't hesitate to ask any questions, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Take care.